Announcing the first Flat Earth UK convention, which will take place from April 27th through the 29th, 2018. In oh, and this gentleman here, and there's also a few other people that also got their tickets donated, and um, you know it's just amazing to do that. I didn't do that. Uh, Dave, you go first, and then what we want to do is, I know Nora's got a question, I think Kathy has a question, but we'd, we'd actually take questions for the next quarter of an hour. You going to turn it on? Turn it on? Microphone. Microphone? Hello? 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 Oh, yeah. I'm not going to it away. Hello? Hello? Yeah, excellent. Uh, no, basically, my, my question is, um, the very fundamental uh, aspect of physics is mathematics, yes? Uh, is that true? Sorry, just a nod, yeah? Um, well, expanding on that, mathematics is uh, a form of measurement, yes? And uh, it deals in units, and the only answer it can give is in units. Is that, is that correct? Uh, not not necessarily. Okay, because the only time I see it not coming up with units is when you come up with infinity. Well, some, like counting numbers don't have units, for instance. If you were to take ratios of things or percentages, don't have units. Yes? Well, surely it would have a a unit of some sort because you're breaking down into a percentage. So 25% is 25 units of 100. No? Yes. Yeah. I, so I, I guess it, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought, I thought you meant units of say like centimeters or miles no, well, or you, kilograms no, you, or something. units like one, two, minus oh. one, minus two yeah. units. Yeah. That's a unit sure. basically. Sure. So yes. Absolutely. So if it can only give answers in units, how can you know the answers it are given are correct if the answer could be something that isn't a unit? And is that why we end up in particle physics and atoms and all this kind of stuff? Because mathematics can only answer in this, this unit way. Um, what, you, what you've brought up is actually not so much a problem, but it is aware, scientists are aware of that. And what, what it is the fact that Maths is a great tool, and I think we all could say that. It started with uh, counting your sheep if you were a farmer, to paying your taxes. It's a great tool, and science so far has found it to be the best tool to help them get to where they've got. But there's no fundamental law of the universe saying that a counting system that we as humans made up to count sheep is necessarily going to tell us all the secrets of the world. And that, but until we get to that limit where it doesn't work, we will continue to use it. But you, are, you are correct in thinking that um, it, maths may, may not necessarily be the only way of getting to that truth. Yeah. Thank you ever so much, Rob. Thank you. Um, Nora, I, I, you want your question, are you? Okay, so first of all, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be disparaging before, so I, I, I hope you didn't take it that way. Um, my question now is just informational. I'm really happy that you're here because you should be able to give us an inside view of your education. And I know that you, none of you really specialize in Newtonian or mechanics, mechanics physics, but you may have got this along the way. Um, my question is about the Cavendish experiment. Um, you're all aware of it. And that that was taken to mean that mass could attract mass. So are, are you, I've heard that it's been reproduced in labs all over the place, but I never see a video of it. So I, don't, I haven't seen it reproduced, but this is not that my question. That's not my question. Do you have, <laughs> do you, that was the premise. Do you, do you have any, have you been shown or do you, can you point me to an example of some other empirical, empirical experiment or empirical observation, which outside of the gravity of Earth can prove that mass attracts mass. Do you have an example of that? Sorry, do you mean, do you mean so uh, you haven't, apart from the Cavendish experiment? Apart from, but there or? Are, there are a lot of examples. Yes, of because the Cavendish, the Cavendish experiment. experiment was done within the gravity of Earth, right? Yeah, but it doesn't measure the gravity of Earth. It measures the I gravity understand of that. the lead balls. Okay, so maybe my question is, can you give me another experiment which can 
prove mass attracts mass outside gravity's whatever. Oh, sorry. <laughs> right. Um, do you um, have any real experiment no, that you can point me to? Well, no, the Cavendish experiment is the one that I saw in school, and it's my go-to example of that. I can't think of one of the top of my head, but okay. I mean, the gravitational constant is one of the most well-constrained constants we have. Right. So there will be other experiments. There will be, yeah. Would be. I, I just I can't give you one off the top of my head. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, that, that, that doesn't fly here. <laughs> that doesn't fly here. I have an important question. Uh, why is NASA faking it all? Obviously. Prove. Prove it, that NASA's faking it all. <laughs> yeah, I told you, Sam. So, how deep, high do you think this goes? Do you, I, so, so, like, every, every, every space, every space mission, ever has never happened. We've never sent a telescope up into space. So there's, there's, vol there's all of the, these volumes of data that have come back from telescopes that are all faked. I think, yes, I, I work with that data every day. I, I think, To them and on other occasions um, they respond immediately even to a point where they can play guitar with someone in sync that's down here and up there at the same time and sing along to the same song have you actually looked at that that we the public not from your scientific point of view but that we the public are given as data and facts of the experimentations that are taking place on the ISS as we speak. Have you looked at that footage? Yeah, I mean, we see the same footage you do. From, um, do you not packets. see them fiddling with the wires? I don't see any wires. You don't? No. Do you, are you aware that they have got a green screen up there? They, uh, no, they're not using a green screen. They're well, they say they are. They say they are, but they give a reason. I don't think they do say they are. Yes, they do, because even on um, w when they were producing for a nursery, they actually had a little teddy bear appear. And they named the teddy yeah, bear, would, plucked it from the air, and, and, right? and... No, that was live. Oh, right. You really need to look. <laughs> you really do need to look, because I hope that if you don't take anything else away from this, that your preconceived ideas before you arrive, that we're all nuts. I don't think it's we're nuts. No, maybe not are. now, but I would hope that if nothing else, you actually take away and think, do you know what? That They actually seem like normal human beings and they seem to have actually thought things through. They're not just living in some fantasy world. And hopefully it will inspire you to actually look and see what we've seen. And, and, and see whether you reach the same conclusions or not. But at least look at what we've looked at so that you can see perhaps where we're coming from. That you only have to really prove that one or two of those things are absolutely fake. You only need to see them fiddling with the strings once. You only need to accept that um, things are going so out of sync uh, you, you, you've got some people that are reaching for things out of the air that, that, that aren't even there. You just, just have a look because once you've proved to yourself or, or you're satisfied, that is not real. That is not true. As far, that's when I originally said to you, NASA became an unreliable source of information for me. Because you, you, you know, I, I, I only had to catch my husband once sleeping with another woman and I presumed he was going to do it again, you know. I... <laughs>
One lie is one lie too many, especially with a body of people like that, with public funding. Unfortunately, um, these guys have got to go in a sec, so we have to... Uh, I believe Dave's got to mention about the moon, and what I'll do, I'll take one more question, which I apologise for, but we're up against it on time. Gary, this guy was waiting here as well. Land on the moon and go through the Van Allen radiation belts. I and mean, obviously you know you land on the moon, yes. But do you seriously think the technology they had in 1969 and to fly through the Van Allen Brown's radiation belts on the growth theory? Is that seriously possible? And you have no doubt about that. Sure. A short answer from me, yes. I would just like to, Yeah, I would I would just like to add is that yeah, sorry. Yeah, let them answer. Not only do yes we believe they did, but I'm also quite proud of it. And I'm quite proud that as we human beings, we've done that. We've achieved something based on our, our idea scientific understanding, based on very simple maths. And I think we you're missing out on some of the greatness of being a human being if you're denying some of these. I really believe it. You're, you're talking about you're talking about the radiation belt stuff, right? Can I ask everyone to keep the noise down, please? If we, if we're not going to hear this. No, I'm right. Right. Can you let them answer as well? Sorry. I'm right. Like space travel is dangerous. Without proper radiation shielding, people can get seriously ill, and well, it dramatically shortens an astronaut's lifespan when they go into space because radiation shielding isn't adequate. This radiation barrier you're talking about doesn't blast someone to smithereens as soon as they get uh, go through it. If you know what I mean. They, they went up there, they probably cut five to ten years of their life. But, I mean, that didn't stop them getting through, if you know what I mean. There's... We're talking about... Um, the, the, the guy from Just recently saying... We have to solve this problem. We can't send that human through this. Technology. Yeah, no, because it's not safe to be sending people out there regularly because they're going to no, no, it no, increases no, no, risk no, of cancer. No, no, no. I'm, yeah, I'm saying once through, increase your risk of cancer and things like that. Once it's through, not. Once back. That's what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Not so sh shielding, shielding, having adequate shielding on these space missions would make it completely safe to take as many trips as you wanted. I don't think that's adequate radiation shielding. <laughs> Yeah, they, Metal they, cabinets, they didn't have radiation papier mache. Shielding no shielding. Is the is the is the high radiation on the surface of the moon because that's where they lived during the during the lunar lander missions? I wouldn't feel safe in that in my kitchen. <laughs> it looks cobbled together, but that's what they put together at the time, and it works. It got them there. It got them back. It got it. They were safe. It got them onto a stage set. <laughs> what are the temperatures in the thermosphere? Duh, okay. I actually like this question. <laughs> okay. Yeah, come on, we've got to play fair, guys. Okay. Particles, as particles have a really high temperature by themselves in the thermosphere, but because, as I talked about before, as you get higher up into the atmosphere, further away from the Earth, air gets less dense. So actually, the total energy in the thermosphere, while the individual uh, particles have higher temperature and higher energy. Because there's so much less of them, so much less of them, you're not going to get, it's not like a, the ISS isn't cooking up there, satellites aren't cooking up there, that's not how it works. There have been huge budgetary cutbacks. I have, there have been. In, in funding for NASA, in funding for the ESA, SpaceX are pushing for Mars missions in 2030. What did you think of the Falcon Heavy launch? <laughs> People saw that go up and disappear from view above them. Even though this is actually very, very important, I think it's lovely. Unfortunately, we haven't got the time, but I've actually got to take off my mediator hat for two seconds and I'm going to make a point. Um, we have had um, connection problems for the live stream. We've had the microphones cracking like crazy, but in 1969, Nixon 
spoke to Houston. I said earlier that I will not ever swear, but bollocks. Okay, uh, I believe Dave Marsh has got a question, and we will take. I tell you what, sorry, what's your name? Eth Ether. <laughs> so, Ethan, sorry. We'll take Dave, and then we'll take Ethan, and then I'm afraid we're going to have to wrap this up. But there's nothing to stop you asking questions directly if they've got time. Okay, Dave. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah. Uh, my name's Dave Marsh, and I've been observing the moon now for the probably last two years. And there's a couple of little things I've noticed. And one of the things I noticed, uh, one day after a new moon, uh, when the moon's probably about 13 degrees uh, uh, the side of the side, uh, moved on, uh, how would you see a crescent moon at night time? If it's in the path of the sun. So one day after a new moon, the moon's only moved 13 degrees, how would it be possible to see a, a crescent moon at night time? Uh, just like a bit of clarification, are you saying that the Earth is in the way of the Sun? It's... From a globe perspective, yeah. yes, a new moon, yeah, yeah. and relatively in, in line with the Sun, yes? Mm -hmm. One day after that, you got a crescent, a waxing crescent, but sure. you can see it at night time. But when you look at models, the the sun is lighting lighting up the path where the moon is in between. I'm just wondering how how would it be possible on the heliocentric model to have a crescent moon at night time? Well, these scales, um, so so that we can see them, are generally not to scale. These these models are not to scale. So actually, the 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 sun and the moon and the earth are kind of you know. In, in our mind, we imagine, you know, big sun, big, big earth, big, the smaller moon, very close together. That's not the case. There's, there's enough distance between them that rays of light from the sun can pass past the earth. They can kind of just dodge the earth and hit the moon from behind. It's not that the earth blocks out the whole of the moon. Okay, thank you. And just one more thing, you know, the Falcon Heavy what went up with the Tesla car. Did, did Elon Musk say it was just a normal car? Uh, it, it had some modifications to it, didn't it? Oh, no, it said it was not, not modified at all. I'm just wondering why the tyres didn't explode in space. <laughs> that is a very good question. Um, I haven't actually seen the tyres. I know, I, I'm sure there were... That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't... Yeah, it was, it was out of shot, wasn't it? You couldn't really see the wheels, did you? From what angle? Able to tell if the rubber had exploded. Oh, yeah. Yes. Maybe, maybe let the air out before they send it. Sure, yeah. The tires don't look like the blade of a Don't you think it's something they might have mentioned? I think it's something these people would have thought of before trying to fake such a ridiculous thing. Oh, you agree they faked it? <laughs> Fair enough. Do what? Give the last one to the kid. Yeah, mate. <laughs> Sorry, say again. Give the last one to him. No, we've already got him here. Oh, yeah, we've already got him. Yeah, I'm on top of it. Thanks, go, Chris. Okay. On George, Bo on George Bush Senior's birthday, he was wheeled through the National Space. No, he was wheeled through the Space Centre. And, ba and basically, um, there, there, was, there, was, there was video of Tim Peake but with a blue screen behind him. Explain, explain that, and second of all, do you believe that ISS is in space? Yeah, what it is, there's a bit, I'll, I'll explain, uh, there's a bit where George Bush is in a wheelchair when he walked into NASA, and what you see is, it's not, they're not focusing on uh, Tim Peake, they're actually focusing on him coming in, but in the background, you can actually see him with like something like this, but it's like a blue with grids, and he's actually got, I think it's a tennis ball, he's got something in his hand, and it's, I don't swear, but no. Um, so um, he's got this, and they're not focusing on that, they're focused on him, but we noticed that, and it, it's, it's, yeah, it was meant to be there at the time. Was that footage like date stamped and everything like that? 
It was talking. It was. It was about George Bush. George W. Bush Senior. In the background. No, 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 not no, walking along. There was a blue. There's a green screen. A blue screen. Sorry, behind, behind him. I'd be, I'd be very interested to see that first. Yeah. Right, before these guys go, can somebody yeah. get it on their phone? Okay. 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 Um, so it would be even better if it was on the laptop. But okay. No. Okay. Well, how about because we don't have a lot of time? How about you? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, you can just have a quick look at it now, and it's a, it's a good um, piece. But while, wherever you are, mate. While, while, while we're well while, while we're watching this. Um, okay. It's not him actually. It's not him actually there, is it? Yeah, it looks like they've got a video. They've got a video up of it, right? Yeah, they look like it. Okay. Yeah, they, yeah. They, yeah. It's, he's not actually standing in the back of that shot. He's, they've got a video of it. Yeah. 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 Well, that that isn't like a blue screen like you the CG stuff in. That's just it's the thing. Yeah, it's just something. But. Why is he standing in front of screen? Why is he standing in front of the board? I, I, don't, I don't think it's a screen. I think yeah, it's... I think it's just a bit of the ISS. Oh, okay. what, a, what, a blue screen? Yeah, why not? Um, but but the, the, the second part of your question is the ISS in space. Um, so my, my supervisor is teaching a first year module this year in which he asked them to go out and take a photo of the ISS as it passed over. And so I've seen photos from the International Space Station from a... Of the International Space Station, sorry, um, from Earth that first year undergrads have taken. So, yes, I do believe it's in space. Be How do you know the location of There's an app that will tell you, <laughs> we'll tell you when it's overhead. <laughs> we oh, no, so, right. so, you know yeah. where to look for it? In, yes, in this yeah. Space, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because we put it up there. We should, we, we should hopefully know where it is. I think you guys might have to book a hotel. So, so just quick. Um, so, is it easy to photograph something the size of a football field from two hundred and fifty miles away? I'm just, just wondering. Yeah. Uh, not particularly. That's why not many of them did very well. Uh, there oh, were, there okay. were, there were some people who had, you know, because uh, I'm just saying, setups, you know, um, yeah, yeah. Some, uh, a jumbo jet, which is, I guess, nearly the size of a football field, isn't it? Is that, is that right? Oh. Jumbo jet, size of football, football field. Right, so a jumbo jet at five miles, uh, seven miles away is is a dot. Five miles away, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, a dot. Uh, five, you can see it. Mean, five, like three. It's yeah. At thirty-five thousand feet, it's quite, it's quite small seven miles the, is a dot. To the human eye. Two hundred and fifty miles. No, yeah, a lot. The, the the best ones that we saw, they all had you know telephoto zoom lenses and stuff. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm gonna have to interrupt. Yeah. These guys have got to go. Chris is actually on a schedule. So um, anyway, can I just say on behalf of us at uh, Flirt Earth, thank you very much. A big thank you from us. <laughs> and would you and would you do it again? <laughs> Okay, uh, we're just going to get Rob to actually do a gyro demonstration, and that's it. it, it it's it's uh, what do they call it? A wrap? I must admit, I was looking for wraps at lunchtime. There was none there. Yeah. Okay, it, what we'll do? We'll get you. We'll get you the footage. <laughs> Thank you. 